Okay, and we're back. Uh, first thing is, I told you guys a second ago we were taking out some 70s and putting in some 67s. I had forgotten that I'd already done this last week, so we're not taking out 70s and putting in 67s. We're taking out 69s and putting in 67s. Now, I've already got these things dropped in here. Now, these, here's the thing. You just want to be really careful with these guys. You don't want to strip them or anything. What I like to do is once they're kind of laid in there, I just back it a little bit until I feel that thread kind of sit down in it. Then turn it down, and it'll go nice and smooth. If there's any hitch or catch in it, you've done something wrong. When you get it down there, there's no sense. You don't have to gorilla tight everything. You just want it firm. Get it in here. It's seated. A little twist. This one's kind of pretty well ready. It's seated. A little twist. Ah. Here's the thing that I like to do at uh, this point. I'm just going to drop these metering rods back in here. Now this is just temporary, this is just for the time being. Put them down inside the jet. Make sure that I've got them in there. There they are, in there. Now I'm going to find out where the bottom of the throw is and where the top of the throw is so I can count the number of uh, screws on this adjustment that I have and where I am. So right now, I just punch down here until I can feel, I don't know if you saw it, but there's that little tip right there. That's what's going to bring them up and down against that uh, adjustment screw. Let's get those things back in there. Now we're good. And you can feel it when you're twisting down on it. You can feel it when it gets to the bottom and it's not touching this anymore. And when you bring it back up to where it just barely touches it. Right there is barely touching. So I know that that adjustment screw right now is at the, the absolute bottom of its free range here. I'm going to start backing this thing out. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine. That'll come up out of there nine turns. We're going to go all the way back down again. That's touching right there. I'm going to come up. Now, some people have their starting point. I have mine. I come up from there. One, two, three turns. So I'm three from the bottom. The biggest thing is, is make a note of that before you forget it so you know where you are when you start the. Uh, tune up or time in or or fine tuning this thing. So I'm going to stop for a minute, write all that sort of stuff down. I'll be right back. Okay, now let's start putting this thing back together. So uh, first thing we're going to do here is get this float back where it goes and the needle. Now this is just one of those little things that just frustrates the heck out of me, but it's got to be done a certain way. This thing has to drop in there. It has to all work freely. And it can sometimes just annoy you to death, which it often does me. And I cannot believe that it just dropped in that easy. I have not had one drop in that easy and I can't tell you how long. Anyway, there it is. Just drop it right in. It's a piece of cake. Put this little uh, 
block back in here. Takes up a little room. Now comes the nice, fun, tricky spot. I was going to use up all my patience getting the float back, but this is probably where it's going to be. Now what you got to do now is put this back in right where you had it. You got to make sure that these metering rods fall right back in the jets and you can't see it. So you're going to have to mess around with it. You're going to have to uh, say some ugly things back and forth to yourself. Uh, you're going to question your own ancestry at times, but just do it, take it easy, and do not bend anything. That right there is now in. You can see that that moves up and down, nice and free. There's nothing binding, nothing hanging it up. Just one more check in here, because that went so easy I can hardly believe it. You know, when things go this easy, you can expect something bad, huh? Alright, so you're back in here now. You want to make sure you get this little collar back in there where it's supposed to go. This is not tricky. You just lay it on there. Kind of get it started. And then, just push it down until it's level and even with that surface around it. If you're not quite there, it's kind of okay because when you crimp down the top, it's going to flush it up anyway. Still nice and free right there. Everything is good. I know I'm three up from the bottom. Everything is good at this point. So, let's go to the next step, which is... fitting that little gasket back on. Now, some of you with a keen eye are going to notice that's not the same gasket. And that's because while practicing my idiocy while uh, you were gone, I mangled the one I had, so since I've mangled things before, I always kind of have one at the ready. This one's got all that lithium grease on it. I've moved that down, that little tab down, and now I'm just going to slide it underneath those arms pull it back and again you just be careful 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 with this thing do not mangle anything don't bend any arms just be careful you're gonna get it there it's gonna fall right in that little seam break is gonna come back together it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be like you read about, and you're not going to believe how easy that actually was if you pay attention. And back in there, that's all together. Get ready to put this thing all back in its proper spot. Make sure everything is good and lined up. Other people do it differently. I do it this way, and that I've got that. I'm going to reach in here drop in the accelerator pump. Reach it in there like you know it's supposed to be. That's a good sign that's where it's supposed to be when it squirts up at you like that. Now everything is good. We're ready to put the top back on. Get that little guy up and out of the way. Be careful. Pay attention. But mostly be careful. This thing is going to drop right back down where you got it. Don't try to twist it, don't try to force it, don't try to do anything except make it smooth and easy. You say that and then it starts to fight you, but that's the way it's going to have to be. Just smooth, easy, don't let anything get hung in the wrong spots, and mostly don't force anything anywhere. When you get it there, it will just drop down nice and easy like that. Just going to uh, start putting 
this thing back together, me, I like to kind of line up the outside screws here to make sure everything is good and lined up before we move on. You get these three outer ones here and you know you got everything where it needs to be. Then grab the little flathead ones here that go in the center. Take your four-eyed tool, drop it right there, kind of seat down in there, and again, I just kind of back it up till I feel that thread just drop. Bring it down there till it does just touches. Four eye tool, drop. Feel that thread take. Drop it down till the dust touches. We're going to go the rest of the way around here, putting these things in. And again, we're just going to screw them down until they just touch. Then we're going to take it down, just crisscross this thing a little bit at a time. Kind of like you know, torquing something. You just want to make sure it goes down nice and flush and flat. Don't crimp that gasket. Get it down to where you get it kind of firm. And I start taking it down like a quarter of a turn at a time and then you'll get to an eighth of a turn at a time until it all feels like it's in there together, smooth. They all have the same kind of crimp on it. Now again, when you're doing this, you don't have to gorilla crimp it. You just want it firm. Anything on a carburetor doesn't need gorilla crimp. It just needs firm. It's going to take a few minutes. I'm sure it's going to bore you, so we'll be back. Okay, and I'm back. Now, all these things have been tightened down, crisscrossed, a little bit at a time. They're all firm. Nothing is gorilla tight. It's just firm. What we're going to do now is put this uh, choke lever back, which we so cleverly did not disengage. It's just there. This is going to be a piece of cake. We don't have to go through the frustration of trying to hook that thing down through the bottom in an area which is just difficult to see because it's so dark. Take it out of there, loop it back, and put it right back where you got it. Get this thing in here. Get it in there and just Firm it down. Hey. And now the next thing is getting this accelerator pump back where it needs to be. This is easy. Going to put it in here. Get your screwdriver ready. Look right through there until you have it lined up where you want it. And push that roll pin right through. Is well. Now, the last thing is taking your uh, secondary rods that you set over to the side and didn't mangle. Put them on the hanger. Don't bend the hanger. Drop it right in there and it will go right in no muss, no fuss. as soon as I say this this thing starts giving me mussing and fussing and it's the easiest part of the whole thing this is where I make up for everything else going so well 
Anyway, you get it in there. Get that down. Again, don't bend it. Just firm it. Now, you have a completely rejetted quadrajet ready to give it a shot. Now, remember that uh, lithium grease trick I told you about? This is the base gasket. Again, get a good quality one. Spray this with lithium, white lithium. You can reuse this as well. When you get it back on the car, everybody has their different numbers, some 10, some 12, some 15, some even more. I get it on here, and again, I crisscross the, the mounting bolts down to 15 pounds. Hook everything back up and you're ready to go. At that point, you're going to want to fire it up, get the idle set. You're going to have to redo the idle because the idle circuit runs off the main jets as well. Get everything idling and then get it good and warm. Get it warm. Don't, don't do it while it's cold or anything. Just get it all good and warm. You're going to start the fine tuning thing. When this is warm, that choke flap's going to be all the way up. Move it on up to about 2,000 RPM. Get it a good steady 2,000 RPM. Then take your hand and just start shading this. Now, and you close it all the way down, that motor is going to stop because it gets no air. But when you start shading it a little bit, it's just going to get a little less and a little less. Now if it picks up RPM, 50, 100 RPM, you're just a little bit on the lean side. If it stumbles, chokes, wants to fall, doesn't pick up RPM, you're a little on the fat side. You just move this adjustment screw up or down until you have it. Just as you shade it, it picks up a little bit of RPM. That's where you want to be. That's your starting point. From that point on, you're going to put it on the car, you're going to take it for some runs. Keep your adjustment stuff with you handy in the car, you're going to drive along. If you feel good throttle response, everything is the way you like it, take it down a little bit. See if you can't get a little leaner mixture in it. If it doesn't respond to your throttle very well, or if it kind of chokes, or just doesn't respond, it doesn't pick right up an RPM, bring it back up. At this point, one quarter inch turn, one quarter turn and one eighth turns are going to affect it a lot. So you're going to take fine-tune adjustments with this thing until you get it to where you like it. One of the ways you can do it, say you're under partial acceleration, you're going up a hill, fairly steep hill, you're under partial acceleration, you got to get a little acceleration in there, but you don't have it all the way to get, bring in the secondaries. If it's running well at that point, you've got your primary jets where you need to be. When you're there, but the throttle response doesn't act right, and you've done all the adjusting you can up and down on this thing, it still doesn't act right, you're going to have to go back in here. But now, instead of messing with the jets, you're going to mess with the metering rods. Thin them, make them skinnier to make it a fatter mixture. Fatter makes a thinner, leaner register, mixture. Once you get this thing set up, it's a quadra jet. This thing will run for a long, long time. No problems, no hiccups. You're going to love it. The best street performance carburetor ever built. Have a good time with it, boys and girls.